There was a POTA robbery. How can we power our mobile ham radios if we can't get through the firewall of our car? Do remote contacts count? Really? And an aluminum boat antenna set up this time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Today, we have four great questions for us. Actually, one is a tale of woe. So let's dive right into it. This viewer is writing, I recently had an activation at Georgia State Park where I was trying out a new BioNO 30 Ampere solar controller. I'd been using a Buddy Pole Power Mini 2, but I was using the newer unit that day. So I had the Power Mini 2 laying on the picnic table to do A-B comparisons. A couple dropped by and were very curious and friendly. The guy was very quiz- inquisitive and seemed technically familiar, but not competent. They seemed like nice people. I noticed that the Power Mini 2 was missing, and by the time I noticed, the thieves were long gone. 175 bucks down the drain. Frankly, the experience has led me to adopt the Air Force two-man rule. I'm very hesitant to do activations in active areas of parks with passersby alone. My question is this. Have you had any negative experiences at parks with people trying to walk off with your stuff? I guess the lesson here is never turn your backs on people and pota on with a buddy or budette. So that sucks. Uh, That just straight up sucks. No, to answer your question, I have not. I have had people come up to me uh, on, on multiple occasions. Um... While I don't mind it, I I would say that I'm not, you know, everybody says, oh, be an ambassador to ham radio and and give them the old preach of ham radio is great and this, that and the other thing. Um, I'm not that guy. I'm not I'm not that guy at all. Uh, I'll be nice to you, but I'm I'm also very uh, not very, but I'm I'm a little standoffish when when people i mean obviously people are curious they want to know what what you're doing but um i've always got my guard up when when i'm approached by by just complete strangers out in the wilderness now i do try very hard to activate where people are not i will try and find uh a place away from everybody else but inadvertently and this has happened you set up an antenna in the middle of the desert Someone is going to want to walk through it. Literally happened to me. So, um, no, I haven't. I mean, I I feel pretty safe where I'm at in, in Huntsville State Park. I mean, I've forgotten stuff and literally left my whole station there and came home. I mean, I'm, I live 15 minutes, so a 30-minute round trip to and fro the park. Uh, I've left all my stuff out there. I actually forgot my Pactena mast, the one that's in that bag right there, at the park. Um, it was leaning against a tree for, like, Two weeks. Like I'm looking all over for this thing. I go back to the park. It's leaning against a tree. It's sitting there. So, no, I haven't had it had that happen. But I mean, there's 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 bad bad actors out everywhere, you know. So I'll always be a little on guard, especially when I mean, our stuff is expensive. There's you know, there's a couple thousand dollars worth of radio gear typically when we go out uh, portable. So yeah, you just you got to keep it protected. I don't know if I'd let that ruin your experience, but. Maybe be a little more aware. That's another reason I hate wearing headphones. Uh, you lose that spatial awareness. I always want to know what's going around me. I always have a gun on me. Second Amendment. Uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But that sucks. I'm sorry that happened. Next, we've got a question about powering your uh, mobile ham radio. He says, I made a terrible mistake and bought a 2023 Subaru Outback after a tornado wrecked my previous car. That sucks. Uh, for two reasons. (laughs) The Subaru is great, except it isn't ham friendly. Among other things, there appear to be no available firewall grommets available for passing power leads into the passenger cabin. I feel you. Uh, My knowledge of the car doesn't permit me to drill into the firewall and install my own grommet, possibly wrecking wiring for the Subaru safety features. Sure, that would happen to me, guaranteed. Uh, these those wires seem to be hidden everywhere. <laughs> Should I take it to a dealer, go to a, a, a stereo installation business that knows about Subarus, or look for a radio that requires less than 10 amps available at the lighter sockets? Trading cars is not an option, but I'm tired of using an HT and a speaker mic as a sort of mobile rig. Dude, I get you, man. So I've got a 2011 Ford Fusion Sport. 
there is no way to get through the firewall. People have emailed me. They're like, here, here's a YouTube video on how to do it. It's not happening. Okay, don't email me. I don't care. I am using a, I'm using the cigarette lighter port in my car. Uh, I bought a just a cigarette lighter plug that had two uh, wires going off, cut the two wires, put power poles on them, and I unscrewed the tip. There was like a five amp fuse in there, and I shoved a 20 amp fuse in there, and I'm running my 50 watt mobile VHF UHF radio off of that, no problem, for like six years now. Uh, pretty much ever since i become a ham, that's how I've been running this installation. Never had a problem, never blew the fuse, uh, nothing. It's just, it works. Now, for uh, single side business, I have no idea what kind of radio you're using. I'm assuming you're just talking VHF, UHF. But in the back of my car, underneath the seat, that other power pole is running to this MFJ voltage conditioner. It's the MFJ4403. And... That allows me to, I don't know what kind of voodoo is inside of it, uh, it just works. Um, but basically it allows me to run if I'm running mobile and, I'm, and I don't, usually I use, I use my battery when I'm running my 891 in the car. But if I'm driving and I, I can have the 891 plugged into this little box, there's, there's power poles on the back. And it conditions in, conditions the power, and I mean, there's probably a capacitor or something in there that allows for the current draw, but it just works. So that might be something you want to look into, but uh, as a kid, you know, when I was like 18, 19, 20, I was one of those guys that had the subs in the, in the stereo, in the car, uh, blasting heavy metal, of course, it would never be rap. But yeah, I mean, go to a car dealer, go to the stereo installation. They, they have this little pneumatic jabber thing that'll get through the firewall, no problem, and do a, a nice job if you want to do something a little more professional and don't want to use your cigarette lighter because I mean there is a, a wire there sticking out but um, either way is pretty inexpensive you know it's like 150 bucks for that little box that I have in the car um, you know who knows what kind of wires are actually going to my cigarette lighter plug but <laughs> like I said after six or so years of running it that way I've never had a problem so uh, where there's a will, there's a way. So hopefully that helps, and thanks for writing in. Next, we've got a rather polarizing question, I suspect this will be. This viewer is writing, he actually has two questions for us. Uh, great to meet you and the crew in Huntsville up on the mountain. I wanted to ask you a few questions there, but it looked like you had uh, had a few cocktails before I arrived. Well, that's the goal. <laughs> so he's asking, during the 13 Colonies weekend, he couldn't hear the Great Britain station. Uh, but I know he would be able to hear me. My receive sucks, but my transmit is much better. I always get great reports, but it's not the same on receive. Well, during the contest weekend, I spotted him on DX Summit and hear people calling, but not, I don't know if he's saying Texas or transmit, so who knows. So I went online and listened to an antenna on the East Coast. He's in Louisiana. Okay, so there you go. And could hear the Great Britain station. I went for it and heard the call back online. I logged that sucker and did a clean sweep. Does that count? Or is it just frowned on? So that's that's the question of the ages, is it? And I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments down in the comments section from, from uh, lovers and haters alike. All I can tell you is my opinion. And my opinion is this. Whenever, whenever you bring the internet into ham radio, it kind of, some of that... Some of that fire, some of that magic dies for me, right? Like like DMR, D-Star, Fusion. Sure, I have all those modes, but it's like, it's still using the internet. So to me, it's not real. Um, God, I hate to sound like this. It's, it's not like, it's not for me. Let's just put it that way. If I'm going to work a station like like the 13 events colony, uh, in a, in a 13 colonies event, and I love working that event. If I don't hear them on my station... I don't hear them. That, I mean, that's it. I don't. I don't want to work a remote station. Uh, that just takes the fun out of it. Like in in New England, they can get Great Britain all the time. They're in that skip zone. And even when I was in Michigan, I could never, hardly ever hear England. Uh, and down here in Texas, I hardly ever hear England. I'm just not in their skip zone. So for me to log on to the internet and then into someone else's radio where that's geographically different than mine. To me, that's just not, um, it, it's like cheating. That's, that's my opinion of it. Um, do I care that you do it? Nope. 
It's just a ham radio contact. It literally means zero in the whole grand scheme of life. Okay, so I don't put much weight into them. Is it neat to get contacts? Of course it is. But does it mean anything? No, no, it doesn't. Other than that piece of paper that, you know, you, you, you send in your five dollars and you get. So, you know, if if you are morally and ethically OK with flogging on remotely, knock yourself out, uh, you know, do what you got to do. But for me, no, I, I like I've been offered other people's uh, like flex radios big on that. Um, like, hey, you can log into my flex radio if you want. I'm like, eh, thanks, but no thanks. Like, it's just it's not my jam. I want to use my radio and my antennas and my propagation. And that's it. If I hear you, great. If not, that's great, too. But I don't know. That's that's just my thoughts on it. So take that for what it's worth. Guys, let us know what your thoughts are. Is 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 remote fake ham radio? <laughs> are, you, are you not a real ham? If you use remote, no, we're not going to use any of that real ham crap on here. Uh, but uh, what are your thoughts? I know a lot of guys like it. I know a lot of guys kind of like, eh. But, you know, that's a great thing about ham radio. There's a million million things you can do. And uh, there's two million opinions on every one of them. So, <laughs> But next, he's got another question. He says, my next question is grounding aluminum boats for you UK guys. Aluminum. They add an extra s- syllable there. I plan on doing some poda in the swamps and don't really have any hard, I think he means ground, to set up a station. So I was going to operate from the boat. That's cool. I have a JPC-12 center loading vertical antenna and an ATOS 120A. I also have an NFED uh, 40 through 10 wire. Would any of those antennas work? And any suggestions for setup? I do have a clamp mount for the vertical antenna. So not having a boat, my official answer is I have no idea. Try it. Let us know. But here's his boat. I do have thoughts. (laughs) I'm a ham, of course. (laughs) Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I suspect you would do quite well, especially if you're on salt water. We also don't know what uh, radio you're using. I I would assume it's a Yaesu radio that's compatible with the ATOS. For me, I would take the ATOS. It, because I have an 891 and it's compatible with that. The JPC, you got to you gotta tune it and all that stuff. So, uh, But essentially the same thing. It's a, it's a loaded vertical antenna, right? So here's the thing. You're going you're gonna to need a good connection to ground. And it looks like your whole boat is painted with camo. So you're going to need to do one of two things. If you're going to use that clamp mount, you're going to need to scrape off some of that paint so you can make an electrical contact with your boat to the shield, the ground part of the uh, the antenna system. You can use your boat as your, uh, uh, your ground plane, essentially. So that would be cool. If you're in salt water, heck, take some wires and literally throw them in the salt water and you'll have an amazing experience, I would, I would bet. Uh, now, with the JPC or the ATOS, if you have a tripod, heck, you could set that up right in the middle of, that, uh, of the bow of the boat there Looks to be pretty flat there, so long as you're not in uh, rough seas and uh, throw some radials out. And I mean, I, I think you're going to have have uh, great success with that. You might want to turn your, make sure your engine's off. That might produce a bit of RFI. Uh, as far as a vertical or, or, or just an end fed half wave, if, if you can have a way to, so if you have like a 10 meter mast, um, you could run uh, at least a 20 meter section of that end uh, fed half wave if, if you have it linked. Uh, you could take the 40 meter section off and just run 20 as a vertical. I don't know how you'd run uh, all 60 some odd feet of an NFED uh, in that configuration. But if you could, if you could just attach a mast somehow and get it up there, you could run the 20 meter element as a vertical, and that would do pretty well for you. But um, I mean, try it out in the driveway. Uh, let us know what works. I have no idea, but uh, I I would rock that ATOS. I think that would be great for you. So uh, cool project. I I hope. Uh, you have a lot of fun out there in the swamps. That that sounds fun in Louisiana, man. That, I was just in Louisiana last weekend doing some activations. So um, not in the swamps, though, but that would be cool. So uh, great questions. I'm curious to see what your success is with that. But the verticals are going to be a lot easier for you than the wire. So I would rock with that. So thanks for writing in. And guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com. And you might just have one of your questions featured on an episode of Ham radio 
tube. Is that what this is called? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mailbag Monday. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> anyway, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again on another episode of Ham Radio Tube.